Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for build time global insights. Well, I'm going to book in today's weather report to you by talking about South America. And this was a satellite animation from sunup to sundown yesterday in South America. And a couple things I would like to point out to you. We'll kind of pause it here right as we start to get into the evening hours. You can see that there's quite a bit of scattered convection that is uh, happening here. So a lot of scattered thunderstorms that are happening through some of Brazil's major growing regions here in the central and northern part. Uh, of the country. But in addition to that, which would signal the um, start uh, or the, the, the continuation of a weak start of the monsoon, but in addition to that, like I said, to the south, you can't see all the haze down here. This is a lot of wildfire smoke that is spreading down here across uh, much of Brazil. And wildfires this year, of course, are a major increase over last year given the drought situation. So we're going to come back to Brazil in just a few moments. But since we're talking about wildfires, I got to show you this animation across the United States yesterday. As we see this pattern, Pattern change evolving here as this deeper trough sweeps into the Canadian prairies and northern plains of the United States, bringing in much colder air. You can see that as I pause this video, just as the sun is setting, the true extent of the wildfire smoke that was coming off of the Cameron Peak fire right in through here. Uh, you can also see this maybe a little bit better if I show you this high resolution view here uh, from uh, MODIS satellite here. And you can just see the extent of that smoke spreading across Fort Collins and Loveland, and then right here across the high plains of Colorado into parts of Kansas and Nebraska. Alaska. So this was an extensive smoke plume from this fire. One of my colleagues, Greg Zimmers here in Loveland, Colorado, part of Nutrien, sent me this incredible picture of what that smoke plume looked like. I have personally never experienced something quite like this. So to see his pictures were just uh, uh, some otherworldly almost. And of course, uh, out at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, uh, their webcam here grabbed from the Research Applications Lab once again shows that, um, that smoke plume. Now, in addition to this, when we look back on the day yesterday, look at how strong the winds were across much of the United States, especially in the central part of the country. We can see where the position of that cold front was, uh, but we saw very, very strong south to southwest winds out ahead of it and then very strong uh, winds from the northwest behind it. Meanwhile, things were quite stagnant uh, down in the southeast and, and starting to calm down here in the Pacific Northwest after what was a very, very windy start to, to this particular week. Now, in uh, looking at total accumulated wind gusts just from yesterday, this is from the RTMA data. So this is hourly data. But if you look down at my color bar here, this is the 40 mile an hour wind speed and this is the 60. And if you look here across the central part of the United States, maximum wind gusts yesterday ranged between 40 and 60 miles an hour. Now, there's a neat satellite animation I'd like to show you next because speaking of those fires, we actually did have some uh, on those very dry and strong southerly winds across parts of Indiana and Illinois. If I pause this here and take you back, there's a couple of neat things to see. First of all, these little streaks you see through here, these are actually jet contrail, and you can even see their shadows on the ground. But as I play this forward, you're going to see streaks of a different type. And right about middle of the day, working toward the late afternoon hours, we start to see all of these little well, they look like clouds, but what they are is smoke plumes and the smoke there racing to the north on those strong southerly winds. Well, I know it's not quite as impressive as what I showed you there uh, from Colorado, but still these fires were very, very fast moving and local firefighting efforts were put to their test. As we see here, this video from Ron I sent this uh, out on Twitter yesterday. Thanks for sharing this, Ron. Great video here of what some of these fires look like in this part of Illinois. These are moving very quickly through our corn and soybean fields and did a lot of damage yesterday. Uh, so this was, this was the problem we were having in the midsection of the United States. From there, where's the smoke going? I would like to play for you at least an animation to show you that while things are going to clear out over in Illinois initially, some of the smoke from that Cameron Peak fire is going to continue to push out of Colorado through Kansas down here into parts of like the Ozarks and eventually come back into this part of the Ohio River Valley. So the smoke from that fire is still going to continue to spread uh, here across the midsection of the country. And you can also see the effects of the fires in California as well where we do have uh, red flag warnings and also air quality advisories in that region. Okay, wind speeds by the time we get to the middle part of today are really going to shift direction for a big section here of the Corn Belt uh, and also getting into the south as we start to see the effects of that frontal boundary that's going to come slicing through the country here, bringing in that northwest wind as it then curls up here into the low that's just off the Hudson Bay. 
So from there, why don't we talk about what we're going to get from precipitation first, and let's get this right up to speed, which is right about here, 6 a.m. So there was, in the overnight hours, the atmosphere trying to produce scattered showers into this area, and some of it did get to the ground, but the vast majority of this was what we call virga. In other words, it was evaporating on the dry air. But as we work our way through this morning, this is 9 a.m. Central Time, it'll be right along the main frontal boundary here that I'm going to look out for scattered showers in this area. So that's where we could see some showers early this morning. As we press through the day, this is now getting toward midday today, this afternoon and this evening, we're going to see those scattered showers move through parts of the Ohio River Valley here and then get up into parts of the Northeast, wrapping itself into that low that's transitioning from Ontario into Quebec. On the back side of this, where we do develop that deep upper level trough, we could get some scattered showers here in the Northern Plains as we work our way into this evening. And as we transition into the overnight hours, that frontal boundary finally moves over toward the Appalachian Mountains. We do get some scattered rain in parts of, of Virginia, North Carolina, Carolina, and then on the back side of this, just be on the lookout for some scattered showers as we work our way into early Friday morning. Now, at this point, we're going to watch a series of clipper systems that come right out here out of southern Alberta, Saskatchewan, and, and parts of uh, Montana, and then cut right across the northern tier of the United States. And this is the one that's coming through in the day on Friday. You can see right here, spreading uh, light rain across this area. It's going to be chilly. And one of these systems later on this week actually is going to have the potential for producing some snow. We're going to talk about that uh, very soon here as we work our way into our weekend forecast. But before I get there, I would like to show you a bit of a comparison. On the left, I have the time period of the 17th of September through the 15th of October. You're looking at those precipitation ranks maps. And what I would like to illustrate is that outside of the southeastern part of the United States, getting back to the lower Mississippi River Valley, and then this section here of the northwest and parts of the northeast, the rest of the country has been extremely dry. And it is a far cry from what we've seen a year ago. Over here on the on the right, excuse me, this would be it's the same time period, the 17th of September 2019 through the 15th of October. And during that time period, we ended up having larger ridges that sat up right here uh, over the southeast. And we created these boundaries that stuck in through here, plus an active storm track. Remember, we would have had a year ago right now up to 25 inches of snow on the ground inside this part of North Dakota. And what I want to share with you is that the forecast that I'm about to go into is going to see a pattern setting up like we saw in 2019 as we work our way into the end of this month of October. What is that? A ridge over the southeast, a stationary boundary right in through here, possibly bringing in increased chances of precipitation. And while I'm not anticipating huge snow, we will be getting some clipper systems that run through this part of the country as we work our way forward. So a bit of a pattern shift over what we had been seeing so far this year. But to put a point on how dry things have been across a broad sector of the United States, on the left, you have the last 30 days of accumulated precipitation on the right, it shows you just the percent of normal. And uh, you can see some solid dark red. That would indicate where we have had no precipitation. And this is becoming very problematic down here in this part of the plains where we're trying to get a winter wheat crop established. Where it's been wet, it's been where our tropical systems have come through. So this is the pattern we're working our way toward. It's going to feature for the next several days a deeper trough that will be anchored somewhere in this area. And the upper level flow pattern is going to run just like this, highly amplified around it. So clipper systems cut right in through here. And this will develop high pressure systems that will move over the southeast with time. And we're going to take a look at what that means in terms of our total accumulated precipitation. So let's get into it. Ready? This is our high resolution uh, European model starting off uh, midday today. And you can see the low wrapping itself up here around the Hudson Bay and the associated front on which we're expecting to see some showers. As we play this for, let's pause it right here, step you back, and just see as we get into this evening and into the overnight hours, you're going to see, remember, like we saw, the scattered precipitation moving over toward the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, but possibilities of showers coming all the way back down to eastern Texas. As we go through the day on Friday, this is Friday afternoon and evening. Don't be surprised if there are a few scattered snowflakes here across the Great Lakes states, but dry across a broader section here of the country. That first clipper system is taking shape, though, Friday night right here in southern Alberta, getting into this part of Montana. And you're going to see that as I work you through the weekend, so this is now Saturday morning, that's when we start to see the chances for some light snow on the northern side of this. It's going to be a mix of very cold rain and light snow here as this low cuts out of the Dakotas and moves over toward the Great Lakes 
week. So this is Saturday afternoon and evening. And we're also going to be seeing snow showers budding up against the front range of the Rocky Mountains here in the high plains of Montana. As we get into Saturday evening, look at northern Minnesota, cutting through the Great Lakes states. We have some chances for rainfall. And then as I take you out here to Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon and evening. This is where the pattern really begins to evolve a bit into a new regime. You can see higher atmospheric pressure stretched here along the East Coast. And with clipper systems coming around, the next one being here on Sunday evening, we're going to sandwich a boundary right in through this area on which I'm expecting to see quite a bit of precipitation starting this weekend into next week, really next week. As I go from Sunday night into Monday morning, now you can start to see the precipitation along that boundary, which is going to stall out here. More snow in parts of Montana. As we work our way into the day Monday, this is Monday evening. Now working away the overnight hours on Monday and now getting into Tuesday morning. If you noticed right in through here, and this has been an area that's been very dry, we're expecting to see repeated chances of precipitation. Now on Tuesday, there might be enough cold air that we could bring snow into parts of maybe into Nebraska and the nose of that possibly even getting over into maybe northern Iowa, southern Minnesota. It's going to be a trick to see how cold those temperatures get. But notice as I take you out to next Wednesday morning, again, that same boundary sits there between high pressure here and then after each clipper, high pressure that builds in behind it. And so that seems to last quite a bit as I go through the next week here in terms of precip. And you start to notice something circulating out here in the open Atlantic. I'll talk about that in just a few moments. So putting together that next week in terms of total accumulated precipitation, again, our clipper systems come through this area. We see the stalled out boundaries right in through here, but it's going to continue to be very dry in California. In fact, we'll probably finish the month without precipitation across much of the state. It'll be dry right down here in this section of the cotton belt and overall across much of the the cotton belt, not too much precipitation to talk about. And this part of the plains continues to stay dry. But in this region and through here, we're going to have rains that will at times interrupt harvest. And just to think about what that snow could look like through the next week, well, here's the probability of getting at least an inch. So the colors down there at the bottom, you can see the color bar, probability of getting an inch. So we're going to watch this in through here and parts of the high plains coming into the Dakotas and Nebraska uh, as we work our way toward um, the next week here. From that point forward, I would like to just stretch us out to the day 10 pattern. You can still see the pattern's quite highly amplified here, and that's what's going to help keep this deeper trough in place. Plus, the higher atmospheric pressure that's still sitting over the Arctic is critical for that as well. So that means as we go out here into week two, this is what we expect to see in terms of precipitation. I'm only showing you the European model today because the trends lately from the GFS have been to back themselves up to what the European has been showing. So in week two, if that deeper trough establishes itself like this, we're going to have better upper level support into this area for increased chances of precipitation. Unfortunately, that puts convergence in the flow of the jet stream here, which makes it drier. And also, as we come over that ridge into the Pacific Northwest, it is favoring drier into week two as well. All right. From there, let's talk quickly about the tropics, because what we see here as we move forward is that the MJ was going to favor, well, right now suppressing motion, but with time, it's going to favor uh, upward motion. So we see as we work our way out in the 6 to 10 day and the 11 to 15, that this particular region is going to favor better chances for having rising motion. And so that could mean tropical systems here and better support where I just put that X for the development of the monsoon. I'll show you that in just a few moments. National Hurricane Center has got its eye on three separate regions right now, and we're just going to provide some simple details here on what we're going to be watching because those three separate regions, according to uh, the European uh, model here, could develop some sy a system that kind of comes like this. And also, we're just going to keep an eye on the Caribbean here for development over the next 10 days. There's really nothing concrete to talk about at this point. So let's get into temperatures. Uh, the National Weather Service must have been up early this morning because they've changed this map about four times since I started preparing this weather briefing. And the main focus I'll, I'll bring your attention to is right in the center part of the United States where we do see frost advisories and freeze warnings, that dark blue there, the freeze warnings, but also the high wind down here uh, in parts of Texas, including some uh, a frost advisory for northern Texas and far uh, western Panhandle 
of Oklahoma. Back to the west, this is a red flag warning and air quality issues here. We've got some pretty chilly air that's going to be coming through and some strong winds into parts of Montana. So this is what the temperatures look like at 4 a.m. when I was doing this recording. Remember, I'm right here where this 55 is. This is an interesting uh, forecast exercise because sometimes when we have large fronts that sweep through, we actually get our hottest temperatures well before the sun rises, and that's going to be the case today. But you can see the gradient from 55 here to 48 um, in, in Des Moines, and or not Des Moines, excuse me, in the Quad Cities. And as you go across Iowa here, all the way back over to Sioux Falls, you can see those temperatures really dropping off substantially with this front that's sweeping through. So the max temperatures on Thursday, we've already hit them here where I live, and you can see the extent of the colder air coming down. As we go from Thursday into Friday, we're going to watch that cold air move to the east, so very chilly day here compared to normal. But as we work our way into the weekend, a bit of a rebound right here in the central part of the country out ahead of the next clipper system, which you can already see knocking temperatures back here. So cool in the east, warm sector here, and then very warm out west compared to normal. From Saturday into Sunday, and then into Monday, that next shot of colder air comes through here. And as we see here, going out to next Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to have these brief warm-ups followed by shots of cooler air around that deeper trough. Now watch what the overnight lows are doing. This is Friday morning's overnight lows, which is when those frost and freeze advisories were set for. And you can see that this is actually climatologically right on time for this part of the country, but a lot of temperatures here dropping below freezing on Friday morning and actually once again on Saturday morning as you move over here toward the east. Now at this point, I don't think North Carolina will be dipping below low freezing, but you do notice in the Appalachian Mountains getting into this part of Kentucky, into West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, we are going to get below freezing on this day, which will be the first time this year for a lot of folks in there. So then we have Sunday's brief warm-up in the midsection of the country, but the next cool down is coming out of the Northern Plains. And yeah, you're seeing that correctly. These are temperatures in the teens here for overnight lows uh, along the Northern Plains. There's Monday morning's lows getting into Tuesday and Wednesday. From there, let's just go take a look out at the 6 to 10 day forecast because the models are, are coming into better alignment on this pattern. We could see, you know, broad scale warmth if you stretch from California through Texas and then up the East Coast. Both models do kind of agree on that. The European keeping the coldest air coming out of the Canadian prairies here into the northern plains of the United States. And then as you go out to the day 10 through 15, the models are trying to push this forward. So we are starting to see some bit of a pattern adjustment once you get past Honestly, Halloween, it's going to start to move uh, this pattern out and could give us a maybe a warmer start to the month of October, uh, excuse me, the month of November. But uh, that's pretty far out in the forecast to be kind of trying to get a handle on at this point. So where we're going to finish is with South America. And I put up here several maps. Uh, they're in chronological order from the uh, October 12th, 2020 to October 21st, 2013. So just looking back here over the last eight years, I would like to illustrate that I even went back farther than this, as far back as the data set goes, and I cannot find a root zone soil moisture map that looks as dry as we did have here with the latest map that came out on October 12th. That's the map that's in the upper left. Feel free to pause it, take a closer look at these maps, but it has been extremely dry. Now, while we are expecting convection to continue, across Mato Grosso, Minas Gerais, uh, Mato Grosso do Sol, you can see those areas right in through here over the next week. It's going to continue to be dry in northeastern Brazil. But overall, where do we stand? Well, that's actually the driest I've measured in a decade. And normally, we should be accumulating precipitation along this curve. That would be the normal start of the monsoon. But it was very delayed. And what's come back has been very weak, as you can see there. So this has already uh, caused the problems we've had with the delays of planting here. But as we stated earlier, with the changes in the Madden Julian oscillation, we are expecting that over uh, next week and the week after that for better chances for precipitation. This just showed up in the European model. But I got to watch it very carefully because the model is kind of bouncing run to run, but it does appear as though the monsoon will get going as we get toward the very end of the month of October. And that is about, about 40 days later than normal. So we'll wrap it up right there. Have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.